Good evening to another Friday edition of Eternal Flame News here in the JMC Ministry Studios. Uh, many things have happened uh, since our last program. I am now a college graduate. Miranda, do you want to explain this wonderful uh, you rare event? You graduated from college. Fair. I did? I, yeah, I said it. You said it. Yeah. You said it and you dealt it and that's the way it is, right? Mm-hmm. And that's how the cookie crumbles. That's And that's how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> Welcome to Eternal Flame News. Okay, on this program, what are we having on this program this evening, Rhonda? We are having military suicides are up to almost one per day. And studies suggest risk from same-sex parenting. We're going to discuss that. Is there a risk? Is there not? Um, church fights against town to have the right to temporarily shelter homeless. Mm-hmm. Military logos will no longer be allowed on the their, the troops' Bibles. Mm. And uh, North Korea, children mm. and the people are suffering, millions are suffering from starvation, malnourishment. Uh, they need medicine. They're not even getting adequate health care. And uh, what are people doing to try to help rectify this hmm. and then with what we're going to start out with first is uh, Jerusalem as uh, Islam's capital and what exactly happened last night on our Twitter account now who is following us after we shared this article it's a little freaky so I'm gonna turn it back over to Jeremy okay as I'm getting <clears throat> this Twitter post made um, we did post and we're not the or originators of the article that we posted, but the article is called Jerusalem as Islam's Capital. And it was on our network blogs post. The original posting is from the JewishPress.com. Now I will share with you not only the message posted on Twitter, but I will also go to the page by whom has posted this. And since this happened 20 hours ago, who in the government is now following our Twitter account? So here, without further ado, Islam Amagugi, uh, M M Islam My Heart, Allah Abakbar, Allah Abakbar, which is supposed to be a phrase like God is with us, God is great, but they mean like Allah, Muhammad Allah. Uh, he RT'd our post. Now I hit expand on the comment, thinking there's more to it. No, there wasn't anything else. He just RT'd and followed what was happening. Uh, I go to this guy's page, and uh, this is probably going to cause a lot of attacks on our ministry, but you need to know the truth. These are facts. We're not making anything up. So this is the guy's page. Islam. Um, he's speaking a bunch of Islam stuff. Mostly nothing in English at all. Uh, he has some Arabic, so on and so forth. Uh, he does talk a lot about Islam, supporting Islam, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and it's completely against Jewish uh, traditions. I'm looking at some of the code uh, posts, and um, it gets real creepy. So, without further ado, who is following us now since this kind of weird uh, posting has occurred? Well, I get this loaded. Brenda, right what do you think about what you just saw? Well, it's got my family worried because I told, I, you know, I was talking to my grandmother last night, and she said that worries me that you have these people following your ministry now and they don't agree with what you support are they going to try to hurt you are they going to be mean to you are you going to have to report I said so far so nothing has happened let's pray that that is the way it goes but once Jeremy shows you what they're connected to it might worry you more alright so um, this is our Twitter account <laughs> for those of you who see the image and we'll take screenshots of this we'll probably take a full screenshot every day on my Twitter account this is the JMC underscore ministries account um, I actually can blow this up quite interesting the follower after that is uh, Rick Santorum's Patriot Voices which I'm working with right now interesting enough and below it is I have no idea Gasmic, Cyprus, and all sorts of weird stuff. Anyway, ICNA. Uh, according to their descriptor on here, it says, Twitter, I quote, Twitter's most followed U.S. Muslim org aims for betterment of society through promotion of Islamic values since 1968. Focus, education, outreach, and social services. Okay, now I'm going to get you 
to look at their posts. I'm going to go directly to their full profile so you can see exactly what it's saying. Um, I'm not following them back. Uh, I don't have a reason to. Uh, more than likely, I expect uh, by Monday I will be getting probably a phone call or a message from somebody, either this account or another. Um, this is the Islamic Circle of North America Twitter account, ICNA.org. Uh, they quote things from homeless in the Bay Area, talking about their Juma Friday. They talk about Sheikh Amar al Munin. Um, things going on in the city hall, all Americanized uh, Muslim activities. Now, when I actually go to the ICNA.org website, uh, what they're talking about is persecution of Christians in America, is what they're, what they're re referring to. But guess who's their best buddy on the front page of the website? Would you ever guess who's the front page of the website of the ICNA, the Islamic Circle of North America? I'm not making this up. I'm not speculating anything. These are facts. I bring you facts on this program, and I had a feeling no one would show up to this program. And check this out. Look at the front page. President Obama. Why is President Obama on the Islamic Circle of North America? Well, in the far right corner, you see they're defending religious freedom to understand Sierra law. <laughs> one eight hundred. Excuse me. One eight five five Sierra. Uh, they got a uh, call now. You they get, got a dawa. Uh, I, I I gotta say this. Call now. You get free. No, stop. <laughs> right where you're at. Okay. I do not want to get a lawsuit. Um, I'm doing this as gracefully as possible without insulting people. But um, interesting it's enough, the article. Funny. No, here's the inter the funny part is it says Muslims can't guarantee Obama a 2012 election vote. Written on 11. You know, I find that interesting. And uh, neither have, can we. They have youth conferences. What they're trying to do, and for the most part, I mean, we got something to help Siri on here. Um, for the most part, it's just kind of like different verses of Christianity. Now, here's the controversial part of it. There are different kinds of Muslim faith. Just like there's different kinds of Christianity. There are Muslims that want to behead Christians. When I was in the Coast Guard, my friend in the military was a Muslim. He slept in my bed, or I slept on the floor, or vice versa. We ate together, we took showers together, we, we did all sorts of weird crazy crap. You know, blah, 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 blah. They were at boot camp, Miranda's like freaking out because I'm sharing all this stuff. No, I'm not. We had them at boot camp, we had them at our unit, so on and so forth. These were people who supported America and were against terrorists. They admitted that there are a group of what's known as radicals, just like just like the terrorists that you see on TV that are in, in, in Syria, that are in Iran, and Kuwait, and all these other different places. They're no different than the Westboro Baptist Church. That's for Christians to be equivalent. Yep. I know very many who aren't following Christ, and I honestly believe they're going to hell by not following <clears throat> Christ's traditions. But I know there are some Muslims that aren't out to kill anyone, just to, to just to make, just to convert people over to their beliefs. That's the only problem. I think people have a right to uh, share beliefs. But when it crosses this line where people's lives are in peril mm -hmm. and women are forced to wear burqas and people are buried up to their necks in the dirt and stones are thrown at them for all sorts of things, and, you know, I, I'm not for that. I, I'm totally not for that. This is one of our breaking news stories. I want you to see this because many that follow me on Twitter have questioned, okay, what's going on? So here's the article. Um... Jerusalem is as Islam's capital posted on the Jewish press. Uh, the reason why this is on here is um, my, well they're not seeing anything. They're just seeing the article. Um, see? Just seeing the article. I know. Um, but the point of this whole thing before I got inter interrupted and lost my train of thought is they're talking about um, one of the most biggest pieces that I see on here is our capital should not be Cairo. Mecca or Medina should be Jerusalem, peace, Allah. This is what we covered on the Marini.tv video. This is mm -hmm. the same guy talking. It says millions of martyrs will walk, march towards Jerusalem. This is the thing that's creeping me out. It says they'll either pray in Jerusalem or be martyred there. Pray in Jerusalem or be martyred there. See, that's the problem I'm running into. Uh, this is they're willing to die for this kind of belief, although... You can kind of relate it back to the American Revolution. They were willing to die for the freedom. But uh, <clears throat> here's one point that I don't agree with. 
There's too much historical fact showing that the Jewish people's capital has always been Jerusalem. Bethlehem has always been a Christian area. And this nine and a half mile wide strip of land for Jewish people and Christians is being fought over by Muslims that have 72 times as much amount of land. Northern Africa, part of the Middle East, part of Asia, part of the Pacific Islands, but they want more. What are they telling the Jews to become? A small little tiny state within their country. Not their own country. Because I've not heard anyone tell me that Jewish people should be allowed to have their own country. So I keep reading more and more into this article. It talks about the caliphate. It talks about many, 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 many things. It's like two pages long. Um, that's what they shared. I don't want to get too much in depth in it because I didn't want us to take focus off of the facts that we will be doing a show in the future about the state of Israel because we have things going on right now with uh, Russia and France wanting to support Syria with a possible civil war um, there's been threats from Syria and other countries on the US and more specifically Russia and France and others are threatening the US by supporting others and coming out and saying don't stop us so right now America is in the middle of an interesting dangerous focal point that depending on the next steps of not only our future election later this year but the steps between now and November what will the American people do what will we be remembered for for this next you know six months as this year comes to close six months from now 2012 is over with can you believe this what do you think Miranda going very fast what do you think about this article so far? I think it definitely is something we need to pray about. Because it just shows you that you're getting closer and closer to the Lord coming back. Really? So we're going on to this article now? You think we're getting closer to that? Um, well, what what else do you think? What else? I mean, this is like one of the biggest topics. I know we're going to take about 15 minutes into it. Because I wanted to... I didn't want to focus on the article. I wanted to focus on the situation at hand of Israel, um, well, it Jewish, says, Christian, and Muslims. It says in the end that it says in Revelations, it says in Ezekiel and Daniel, and so on, that the, all the nations will come against Israel. Yeah, and and that's going to happen, and and the world world can basically converge on Israel. There will be a march on Israel. There will be a war, and then God will bring down hail and brimstone and defeat Israel's mm -hmm. enemies. You're exactly right. So, I mean, the Bible, what we're seeing happen, the Bible's already said it was going to happen. So we've known for years and centuries that sooner or later this was going to get closer and closer and come about. And I just think it's just one more stepping stone to getting to that point. You're exactly right. And then on other news, coming more back to the focus of America, mm -hmm. what is happening in our own country by the fact... Now, I don't take this article lightly that I'm going to share. Because there's big, there's, big con oh, there's big controversy over it. Because this is what our military is supposed to be able to resist. But, be Jeremy, able to endure. at the same time... No, Nobody knows troops. what we're talking about yet, so let's okay. wait a second, wait a second. Um, the average troop or soldier, military officer enlisted, probably does not, and you've seen movies depicting this, the kid's shaking, you know, he's shaking, he can't load the bullets, and he's freaking out, and he's shooting, they're gone for a few months. If you look at the history before America, other nations were at war for several, several years, mm -hmm. decades long. Uh, the longest uh, war I'd have to, I would want to re reflect to would be like China, but they were like centuries old, you know. Um, but now here in America, we've had over a ten-year war, not in the same location all at once. Many troops have uh, had multiple tours of duty now. The average citizen would think, well, you join the military, you're constantly in a 
conflicted zone and, and it doesn't work that way if you don't get sent into a war zone you have practice every week of exercise yeah. you know some nor you're you are at a duty station you have regular stuff you have to clean it you have to work some other things out but being completely ready 100 percent you know you practice your gun and stuff like that but you're never you're put never in a, you're never really put in a situation where yeah. Someone's in, here. You are, and here they are, and you're sh get, getting shot at. And there's things going off, and whatnot. So when I look at this next story, I want to talk about CBN News talks about military suicides up almost one per day, and it has to go back to what I just said. I mean, they're talking about the Department of Defense statistics: 146 men and women took their own lives in the first 148 days of this year, 2012 alone. Just this year. 17% increase from 2011, 24% increase in 2010. And what I told you, combat exposure, what's happening is many ki uh, many young adults, kids, whatever you want to call them, once you're sit sent overseas, you're a better candidate to go overseas again. So they'd rather have someone experienced go than someone not knowing what they're doing. That's the argument. Uh, but because of that, what's the limit on how much can you stand? And it's different for everybody. Some people, I, I believe they go through post-traumatic stress disorder the first time. I believe we are seeing the breaking point of what our soldiers can take. For the simple fact of the soldier that went berserk and he had already been injured and he had a brain injury and he went and killed all of them civilians. See, to, see and he, having, he was on his third tour of duty. So they got, from, like I said, they also have prescription, prescription drug abuse, uh, financial problems. I just saw a picture recently oh, yeah. of uh, a kid, and I'm not going to share the picture, but apparently he's defaulted on his mortgage and had three tours in Iraq or something. Uh, I realized when I was in the military, we were told <coughs> to stay away from payday loans, you know, yeah. those quick, quick fixes. We had someone do that, and they got way in over their head. Uh, a lot of times, you'll have people go to boot camp, they'll get out of boot camp, and they go buy a brand new car, and they're only making eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars a month, and they got to pay rent, and then trying to pay a three hundred to five hundred, seven hundred dollar a month car note, and they that's how they get caught. Um, they're not like me. I got a three thousand. I got a bonus after my A school, and I used my bonus as my down payment, and I moved up to an E four. So I made enough money to be able to pay off some bills and pay my 289 a month car note, but not many people wait that long. They normally do it wrong. And you know, I went and got a Honda Civic. I paid 289 a month. I had friends that were leaving Petaluma, California, paying five, six, seven hundred dollars, and had the same credit limit as me. It's because some of them are young and don't know any better. Others, you know, are married, have kids, and uh, it's sad to say. I can tell you right now, there are men and women in the military, E1 through E6, that may be on food stamps. Mm -hmm. Because they're living, say, like California or somewhere else, where they're not going to make any and it's and it's, and, oh, and it's so expensive to live there. And then it gets expensive, so they end up getting food stamps. You know, you can only, you're not, you're not going to make any more. You have to take a test, and you have to get ranked a certain way to be able to move further. It's not like you can just go knock in, your do in the door of the office and say, I want to negotiate a raise. No, you have to do no. a lot more for it than that. So this is the problem. Uh, the solution, the military is trying to increase their pay to a civilian equivalent. Like the job I did, I looked it up. If I stayed and had my four years... It's equivalent to having eighty thousand dollars. I didn't make eighty thousand dollars when I was in. Well, they're saying, well, my health care yeah. that I didn't have to pay for, uh, my food, my housing, the job I did. Civilian would pay eighty thousand dollars. Well, the military they didn't pay me eighty thousand dollars. They they paid me twenty. You know, I remember people telling me after getting out of boot camp twenty, thirty, forty years ago or a little more, they made a hundred eighty nine a month or something. You know, the military was supposed to be the cheap way to get a lot of things done. And I hate saying that. Uh, when you learn a skill, you don't learn everything. Like now I have a computer science degree. The computer stuff I did in the military and the communication stuff I did in the military were only snippets and pieces of what I just accomplished in two years. The other thing I think why a lot of these soldiers are committing suicide is because um, there's no, there's not a lot of support for them. Our country, we've got news reporters saying they don't want to call them heroes. They're ashamed of them. Um, I think 
support has uh, citizens. The American people have failed our troops too with the support. Mm -hmm. um, especially those who have been injured, whether it be mentally or physically. I think we failed them. Oh yes, we have. And and I think that's one of the reasons they've lost hope. They've lost hope in their country and they commit suicide. And they've lost hope in God because and 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 faith that today's tomorrow's gonna be a better day than than today. And it's really sad. And this is this is the future this is our the you know, the future of America and these young people, these young men, these freedom fighters, as I like to call them, and they're all killing them. They're killing themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, the year is only halfway over, and look how many's already committed suicide. We're getting to to the point where a soldier a day is killing themselves. It's this has to stop. We we need to support our troops. We need to tell them we're proud of them. Mm -hmm. We love them. And we, we appreciate everything they do. Because if we don't, they're not going to be here to protect our freedoms. Exactly right. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to this. Now. <laughs> Very depressing <laughs> to talk about that. Now, this next portion that we want to talk about is very sensitive as well. The University of Texas sociology professor Mark Jenner said in his study in social science research that the emperor claimed that no noticeable difference exists must go. What am I talking about? Two studies released on Sunday may, uh, talking about gay parenting, same-sex marriage. Um, now, in my case, in my life, I did not have same sex I had same sex parity, my mother and my grandmother. Yeah. You let me talk father let me you. talk to you about this in a way that's not controversial and you'll get the same end result. I'm a man, I was a boy, raised by two women. There is no woman on the face of the earth, and there's no man on the face of the earth that can one hundred percently identically mimic the actions and mannerisms of the opposite sex. They can look like the opposite sex, they can sound like the opposite sex, they can go to a doctor and have their physical organs change to the opposite sex, but their brain will permanently always be wired to whatever sex that they were born with. So their answers, their questions, their mannerisms, and even their emotions will reflect the gender of whom they are. Now yes, there are many women that can join the military and be just as physically strong as a man, there are many women that can cuss just like a man. There are many men who can have a light, dainty voice. But these are all attributes of something that's further deep in the psyche of someone's brain. Now that I've said this, let's talk about same-sex parenting. It's the same thing. The one thing that I happened with my life is I wanted a father figure. A woman cannot be a father figure. No woman on the face of the earth can act like a father. They can... Now, here's the argument that I will support same-sex marriage and same-sex parenting, what they can do. This is the only thing they can do. They can just do a generic blueprint of raising a kid. They can make certain they bathe. They can make certain they eat. They brush their teeth. You know, go to school, help them with their homework. Yeah, they can do that. But they can never fulfill that opposite gender role. Now, the argument is in the world is we need to become more feministic in nature for those that are more masculine or, or more masculine for those that are feminine where the lines of masculine and femininity actually change. Um, what good does that do? If you take away the sole wholesome purpose of what a man and a woman is. When you remove what a man and a woman is you transform what truth means. You transform those things that are in your life, and you end up being like me, the kid. Well, the I kid, all searched my whole kid. life for men to, to, to help me. I always wanted a man in my life. I always wanted to know, you know, how does a man think? And you know, I was raised, my brain was wired. They were my mother and grandmother were trying to wire me to think like a woman, and I all it never worked. <laughs> because there, I knew there was something different about me than a woman. 
I didn't have no man in my life to tell me what that difference was until I got out of school. I Yes, I did have some men teachers and had some men, friends that were boys, but until I got older, I actually was able to ask questions from a men's point of view, perspective, and it's completely different because men are wired differently than women. And, you know, a men, men couple will try and teach the kid not to be so emotional. That's what the basic core line. Women will try and teach the men to be more emotional. And there's supposed to be a fine line balance, and, and that's why men and women are different. If we want, if we really want to stop this racism, we really want to stop, you know, and show tolerance. So why don't we tolerate the differences of men and women and celebrate the differences of men and women instead of trying to make one more masculine or one more feminine? Your thoughts? My thought is, it doesn't matter how much you say same-sex parenting is a is good. The child has to have a mother and father to have been born. Okay. Well, that argument is starting to become non-true because science is saying... You have to have the sperm of a man and the egg of a woman... But here's the, here's the creepy part. To have a child. This is something very sci-fi. You would think this is something in a movie. We went from invertilization, you know, where you put a, a sperm in, in an uh, egg and make okay. a test tube baby. You know what they're working on now? Scientific studies in UC Davis and elsewhere are trying to find a way to genetically create sperm out of a woman's complex DNA where there will no longer be need of a man. So this world, <laughs> Miranda's like, what? I'm like, yeah, let me say this again. They're trying to find ways then to Then why were those men and why were women created if we don't need one and the other to make a baby? That's the good argument, you know. That's the thing. There's forces in this world, the forces of principalities and darkness. Uh, Satan himself wants to destroy the foundations of what Christianity marriage is. Um, and like I said, we talked to some children uh, this uh, this week, and we asked them this question, and I'm going to ask you guys that, that are against my beliefs. How many of you uh, have been told that your homosexuality is wrong or whatever, and no one's ever shown you something different to do other than be straight, but not showing you how to be straight? Or what you can do. All they're telling you. you is you're a sinner and you're going to hell. More, more, more news. California has banned teaching that uh, and teaching in in the psych, psychology world uh, a, a transformation of mind status of um, stop being a homosexual. It's illegal to do that in California right now. Just passed. Mm. So what I'm talking about on my show. So this you're evening, not allowed if you if you want to change your mind, you can't get any help to change your mind. No, that's what they're trying to say. Wow. They're trying to say that, oh yeah, this is the way it's going to be. And my, I'll, finish, I'll, I'll, I'll just say my last thoughts. If same-sex parenting is the way to go, then why, then, then why did this little girl, that, why do these children need, still need a father and a mother, a, a man and a woman, to make the baby? If there's no need for... For men in a lesbian relationship, and there's no need for women in a gay relationship, then why in the world do we still need a man and a woman to make a baby? You know, that's a whole different story. But so that's what why. I'm gonna. That's you that's know, my final and, comment. And, and here's the thing: I do pray. I do pray for those that are involved in any form of sin, including homosexuality or or whatever. But the the point of the matter is, we got to show people that there's hope and a chance. In a future, and you don't have to be this way. Because I'm in a true example that, you know, you can turn out to be considered normal, but when you get older, there's that point in your life, and not it, not everybody chooses it, is to want to go find out, well, what does a man really think about? How does he work? You know, if you're only around women, and you're the only man, there is going to be some question at some point in your life. You're going to notice there's something different about you. I always found out that men were easier to get along with than women. That's what I found out. <laughs> I always had guy friends more than girlfriends because I couldn't get along with the women. I just, they always wanted to bicker and they wanted to fight and they were Row! Hmm. That's when I, even working, even when I worked, oh, I'd rather work with a man any day than a woman. I don't know why. I don't know why. If they want to be equal, then they better act equal. Right, Jeremy? Well, that's the thing. That's the problem. They're wanting to do this equality thing. That a man and a woman are no different. Then treat people the same the, the same way. I, I, I worked with. That's like, not. But you're I'm not. Saying, you're not getting what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is, 
Eat, you keep saying I treat people equally, but don't be be tolerant. Well, and I'm not going to be tolerant when people are being mean to me. People that are supposed to be my friends are going to be mean to me. I'm not going to be tolerant of that. I'm going to go find some new friends. That's why I went and hung out with the guys because I got tired of the girls. Didn't make me a lesbian or something like that. It just made I just got tired of. It just made me want to hang out with Jeremy over here more and more. You know? I don't know. I just never... Alright, now on to our next subject. You want to talk about this, Miranda? Oh, there is a church that is fighting for the right to give temporary shelter to the homeless. The city is saying they don't aren't zoned or they... Um, a local church is fighting city zoning and fire codes that Alhambra officials say it say bar it from being part of a program to house homeless families. Representatives from Al Alhambra's First Baptist Church say they want to get to join with 13 other local host churches in the Family Promise program, which asks them to host three to five homeless families for one week four times a year as part of the church's charity work. Alhambra officials say the church cannot house the families because it would be considered a homeless shelter based on an ordinance passed by the city council in June 2011. For First Baptist is not located in an area zoned for a shelter, Director of Development Services says. The pastor, Lee Ham Hamby, said the church has been trying to work with the city for months to get clearance to participate in the program, but at a meeting in May, we're told that doing so would violate city laws. So they would rather these homeless people sleep out on the streets, sleep out in the cold, and have nowhere to sleep, and maybe even sleep in a dumpster under a bridge, and well, freeze let me tell you to, well, let me, let me tell you, freeze to death because well, you're not zoned. Let me tell you what this comes down to now. Uh, it recently, is, it is recently so in the continuum sad. of care here in Chillicothe, Ohio, we had a representative from the city of Chillicothe come. And she was saying she got on board and trying to create and make certain that the, whatever area you're wanting to have a homeless shelter, uh, if there's any zoning law that needs to be abolished to make it where you can't have the shelter where they wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. What's happening in this situation, it's all about funding. Yeah. It's all about money. It's all about they money. Will, someone will lose money if they change the zone to go to a shelter. Even though there are grants the, to have shelters. And even though there's no place for these families to go because there's no shelters around, they need a short-term place to stay so that they won't... And these are families. These are children. And we're saying a church, a building that has water and electric and bathrooms and normally even a kitchen now can't have somebody sleep on your floor. The they say that uh, you still have to follow the building and fire codes to house people and they, they're they not against organizations to help the homeless. They spent over $500,000 last year to, on homeless programs but in this area where they want to do it um, where there's a they, need where there's a need they're not able to until they change the until they make a bigger building because there's a fire code possible violation there's all these other violations blah 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 um, in the meantime, people are going to, um, thank God it's not cold, but if it gets too hot, people could die. So exactly. hopefully they get something figured out for the winter. You're either going to be I mean, dehydrated don't put them somewhere else. or you know, hypothermia. This is what bothers me. You know, we got all these, I understand, zoning, blah, blah, blah. They're afraid a homeless person is going to sue them or something. Well, I would sue them for not letting me have a place to stay. <laughs> It's so sad. Homeless will never know about this story because a lot of homeless, a lot of homeless now do read the news. It, it, it's but, it, uh, we have become a bureaucracy in America. We have we have gotten the government and too many laws into place, and too much power has been given to make it where we can't even bring people into a church and give them some food and give them shelter for the night. Mm -hmm. I mean. Come on. See, it used to be, uh, in the mm -hmm. olden days, the church used to be a place where convicts could go for yeah. shelter to try and change their lives, homeless to be fed, 
poor to be able to get help and remove themselves from the poor situation and either join the church or better themselves so they can get on with their lives. Nope, it's and a now business. It's, it's a, a business. It's a, ba it's, a, it's a business band aid. We put band aids on problems. We can go on mission trips in other cities, in other countries, and then when we have a problem here locally, no one's able to do anything locally, but we can do stuff globally. The point of going global is to be able to come back to your own city and do something there too. Everyone has different parts of the body of Christ. I know some are called to another country, some are called to other cities. Then go there, live there, be there. But the one thing we need to pray about, we need to pray for the cities of America. We need missionaries, ministries to rise up in America to reach the needs of the people. We have hundreds of thousands in revival in the Middle East and Africa, but we have people falling away from their faith in America. We're just told recently America is no longer the superpower that it used to be, that China has taken over this. So now China is setting the goal with one of the largest churches in China, and thousands are getting saved, even in the persecuted church. Mm -hmm. And those churches are illegal. And speaking of illegal, military logos will no longer be allowed on troop Bibles. The Southern Baptist Convention, yes, where I, I've been involved with and I did, preached my first sermon in, can no longer use military logos on its Bibles for service members. Lifeway Christian Services said, uh, says Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and I would also probably say Coast Guard. They didn't mention the Coast Guard yet. Have revoked authorization to use their official service emblems on the scriptures. Military uh, Religious Freedom Foundation threatened to sue. Uh, now special Bibles for military members will now bear a generic logo. Just something plain, whatever. So we have on one side of the coin, we've talked about before, the uh, clergy, uh, the Protestant Catholic uh, clergy that are involved in the military, cannot pray in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Now they're being told they can't even put a military logo on a Bible. Why? Because atheists and all this are probably offended. You know? I'm like, well, why not put your atheist symbol on a book that you want to call an atheist Bible and put the Coast Guard and all them all over it and put the, 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 the military logos on the Bible and let everybody be happy. Put it on everybody's stuff. No. These group of people don't want tolerance. That would be tolerance. Yeah. No. They want... No Bible. They don't even want to have their own version of the Bible. They want no one but to have anything. But they're also probably saying separation of church and state. The government, if they keep the logos on the Bibles, that would show the Marine Corps and all the other branches support support one religion. I want to make a big prediction. <clears throat> In the, by, 20, by 2020, I would not doubt there will be some kind of court ruling to try and remove clergy from the military. Oh, I wouldn't doubt that either. I would not doubt that at all. See that in the horizon... What wonderful times we live in today, right? What right. wonderful times. Clergy. We're so happy. You know. Um, so it's, so it's wonderful times. You let's, know, go, let's go on a picnic. This is what we need to... <laughs> yeah. And then we go to North Korea. Oh, this is, this is a very heart-wrenching story. Uh, millions of North Korean children are not getting the food, medicine, or health care they need to develop physically or mentally, leaving many stunted and malnourished, the United Nations said Tuesday. Um, as North Korea is one of the, is, is a communist country, it, they say they're socialist, but they're worse than that. They are the most government restricted country in practically the whole world. We keep sending food and all these supplies to them, and guess what? The government takes that. And look, Millions of children are starving. Nearly a third of the children yeah. under age of five um, in the rural areas have chronic diarrhea, lack of clean water and sanitation. Electricity has become the leading cause of death in kids. Hospitals are hardly even there. Medication is short, short in supply. And even on another note, I've noticed here locally... Um, food supplies are, are changing. Medications but what's funny are changing. But is even when, here, but you go, but when you go work. to the hospitals and you go and you look at the cities, they're spotlessly clean, but bare. Few have running water or power, and drugs and medicine are in short supply. The agency said in a detailed update on the humanitarian situation in North Korea, they they say I've seen babies who should have been sitting up who were not sitting up and can hardly even hold a bottle. 
um, that was from that was a UN reporter. The United Nations called for 198 million do in million dollars in donations for 2012, mostly to help feed the hungry. It's it's terrible. It's terrible what this government is doing to their own 16 people. 16 million North Koreans, two-thirds of the country, which means 75% of this country, depend on a twice-a-month government ration. But this is what we want to go to. We want to go to socialism and communism and progressivism. And what's happened is the, is the uh, currency is so high and the food costs so much and everything costs so much that the average person who gets a job... Well, the wages don't go up anymore. Mm -hmm. The price of everything around the government goes up. owns everything. The government owns everything, and they regulate with the prices. And now, you would think in a perfect world, if the government owned everything, wouldn't they make everything affordable so everyone can no. afford, uh, get it? No, that's not how it works. You know, this the is the poor a, get poorer and the rich get richer. That's the way it goes. And this isn't about ninety-nine and one percent. This is like twice as worse than that. This is where the one percent and the ninety-nine they both get cut the crap off, and there's only. 100% dependent on a government. Yep. You know, when we keep transforming what we're doing in our society, like here in America, we were founded on principles that got away from things like this. We were about helping the poor and the needy and helping things and building, you know, many things for us. And as we continually go down a global, international world order, that's what it's being called, um, I understand we trade things internationally. And think blah, about blah, it, North Korea. Fine, but these things are getting out of I hand. Want you, I want to th talk about this. North Korea has government run health care. And 16 million people, a third of their third of their people, are in need of medical care and medicine, and they're not getting it. And that's yet, crazy. that's what they want to bring here. They want to bring government health care here. They want to bring more regulations and and stuff like that on the people and we're going to end up just like this we need to pray America we need to we need to stop this because See, and I realize many of you are like well that's North Korea I don't care um, it's happening here in America too guys yeah um, churches can't even feed and house churches can't house homeless churches can't feed homeless depending on where you live you can't even donate food to a shelter or something like Anymore. that um, you can't open a place without going to the food bank, and that's the thing that worries me. I'm seeing that more and more, many places here in America, um, all in the all in the cause of we're going to save and help people, and that's not saving and helping people. But we need to protect them from the bad food. It's like the moment you tell I can't, like I can't give Miranda something to eat, well, she's your spouse. I mean, well, that's about how about absurd they're making it that you can only feed yourself, and oh yeah, I can't I can't go to the store anymore to get her food. I mean, weird, weird story. I went to a store and I couldn't find potatoes. I had to go to another store to get potatoes. You know, these are the kinds of things that worry me when we keep getting in these progressive movements. Um, all in the sake of their, their mindset is protecting someone and helping someone. When you're causing more people to die. You know, I, I have no problem with government helping giving food. I have a problem when the government says the regular people can't give food. These food banks that are run by the government, okay, that's great. Government's helping out. I had government cheese as a kid. I didn't turn out bad. But I also had regular people. Mm -hmm. Not denominations and non-profit. Regular people fed me and helped me and clothed me and took care of me. When my own family and things weren't there for me. There will no longer be anyone else like me if our government continues to overstep its bounds and then other countries like North Korea yeah then you won't find another Jeremy Cavalry that has a testimony of mine surviving homelessness why because they'll be homeless and they'll just die if they run out of food if the government doesn't have any food then all oh, the homeless shelter shuts down now, do you see the bigger picture we can't ration anymore the government doesn't have any more money so we're gonna raise the taxes France is already doing 75 percent taxes that's supposed to be our closest ally we follow suit with our allies. We're in trouble. This has been Eternal Flame News. We'll see you tomorrow for James C. Live at 9 p.m. Eastern here at jamescelive.com. Uh, now I have to share with you, um, Randy, tell them what's coming on tomorrow. 
Just uh, briefly, tomorrow on James C. Live, we are covering a Christians should ground themselves in Scripture, not fads. Uh, a Christian was threatened to be arrested for pa passing out Christian literature at a, bu a Buffalo, New York uh, festival. And Westboro Baptist Church is protesting Billy Graham. And then some Bible prophecy. India has created the world's largest biometric database. And we're going to talk about how that is connected with the mark of the beast. Along with, we're going to talk about Carrie Underwood and her thoughts and how she has come out in support of gay marriage. All this and more tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern at JMC Live. God bless and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.